the coupon sends my servants out to about every everybody out there. And uh sends it to the news. news. Uh, yeah. Sends it to the news media. And, <laughs> Worldwide. <laughs> uh, a lot of those people at Fox News are very pro Soderway. Well they need to be preached to and you're yeah. doing it. <laughs> Whether and they here, like it or not. Past, uh, this past week what they call the interfaith currency uh, performing blessings and abortion mill. These these women are witches, okay? Uh, United Church of the Antichrist, United Methodists, these people have Sophia worship. They came out, 31 of them, to the abortion mill to bless the abortion mill and bless the offering of the children up to their God. Uh, these are very wicked people. And so, uh, I'm saying it just the way it is because they try to give you the appearance that they are clergy, the real call of God, but they're wicked in every way. I had one time one of these, one of their women tried to, when she tried to seduce me, she came up on and uh, did this real sweet little feminine thing, and uh, I knew what she was up to. First of all, I knew she was a lesbian anyhow, okay, to begin with. But I told her, I said, first of all, uh, you're not a reverend. That name's used one time in scripture for God, and you're not God, and you're not a pastor. Women are not called to be ordained ministers. The Bible is extremely clear on that. And I said, you're in rebellion. And the Bible says that rebellion is the same as witchcraft. And we're going to take a look at that as we go through the message tonight. And the title of the message was Devils and Dogs Arising. Devils and Dogs Arising. So, you don't normally ask questions during a sermon, but go ahead. What did you have? I, I, there was an email sent to me, and uh, Larry Nichols was on the, with Dredge. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. No. And he said that when uh, he was President uh, Clinton, that she used to go to California. Oh, yeah. He said that on my radio once program. Once a week, once a month, so... Witchcraft. Yeah, she's... Witch, witch... Oh, yeah, Hillary is a witch. Yeah. And we knew, we knew that from a long time. She's a lesbian, or she's bisexual, she's a witch. Uh, she's a very wicked woman. You know, she called into the radio program one night, okay? Hmm. And uh, she was not... A, <laughs> she was not very polite. <laughs> she, Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, she did not uh, like what the, the program that night. But anyhow... We're going to start tonight in John chapter uh, 6, starting with verse 60. Many therefore of his John. disciples, when they heard this, said unto him, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Well, no, anyhow, Jesus had just told them that if you love me, uh, you're going to have to uh, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Okay, in other words, he was, but he was speaking symbolically to them. And they couldn't understand what he was saying. And uh, in other words, he was telling them that they were going to have to share in his uh, persecution, in his pain that he was going to. And anyhow, because they were pretty obvious that he wasn't telling them to jump upon him and gnash him uh, with his uh, with their teeth. I mean, uh, with all of these people out there, if you believe that he was speaking literally of flesh and blood, with all of these people eating the flesh and blood of the Lord, he wouldn't last very long, would he? So, anyhow, uh, he was speaking to them symbolically. By the way, the symbolism in the Lord's table is, is much more important um, and has a lot more meaning than it ever could have been had it ever meant anything other than, than symbolism, had it meant literal. And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, said unto them, does, does this offend you? And what if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you are the spirit, and they are life. And some there are some of you that be, believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, said unto them, and he said, therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except they were given of him of the Father. From that time 
many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he that should become, who should betray him, one of the twelve. Now, here, he didn't say that he has a devil. He said uh, that uh, he is a devil. He is a devil. And I believe today that many of the liberals out there have crossed the line. They have got to the point where they've become so reprobate there's no turning back to them anymore. And you hear some of them talking out there uh, where they hate God with such a passion. And they hate us more and more. Uh, you're seeing more and more uh, signs every day uh, from these people um, talking about killing all of the Christians. And if you turn over to Acts chapter 10, and in Acts chapter 10, starting with verse 37, we read this. The word I say, you know, which was published throughout all of Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with a power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And I think what's happening, a lot of the illnesses that we have today, and this is it, is demonic oppression. It's, uh, you have uh, these people that show up, like I just showed you, those 31 apostates, they pray against us. They pray uh, to, their, to their Satan against us. They pray that, uh, uh, you know, we will become sick. Uh, some years ago, when I was asked to come to Toledo, Ohio, there is a huge abortion mill down there, three stories high, very long, big building. And the city had taken the property by eminent domain, and so they were closing, and the, the people from Toledo Right to Life asked me to come down and, and speak at a rally outside. But when I went down there, uh, they, had, they had been moving out, they left the doors wide open, and so we went on in. I had John McTurnan, you all are familiar with John McTurnan, 26 years U.S. Special Treasury agent, author of a lot of books, and uh, uh, nationally known speaker. He was with me, and another pastor. And as we went in, we went in, and we, they had tables, uh, end to end. I mean, from here to almost to the road, that's how long this place was. It was huge. And, and on these tables, they had all of the... Uh, materials they used for witchcraft. They had all the herbs, they had the candles, the brown, the black yards. I mean, the, the whole length. At every place they had these settings. And then they had lesbian pornography. They had, at each setting, lesbian pornography. And then they had the NIV Bible. Everyone at every station, the NIV Bible. Okay, That shows you what they were using. But anyhow, uh, these women were there praying against the Christians. That's what they were doing, praying against the Christians. And they, here's where they killed so many babies in this place. And so, here we read, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and doing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, who they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be judge of the quick and the dead. To him gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believe in him shall have shall receive remissions of sins. And uh, there is nothing more important than to receiving those remissions of sin, because without remission of sin there could be no salvation. 
And if you turn over to Acts chapter 13, because we see, again, like I said today, uh, a very demonic uh, suppression out there. The, even in this area out here, uh, in this northeast Ohio area especially, uh, there's never, never been uh, a successful crusade out here. There's never, everyone who's ever attempted to have a successful crusade has failed out there. Um, and just, it's like it's a cloud or a dark shadow over this, this whole area out here. And that's why we're out here, is because we're needed out here to be a light. And when people pray, prayer makes a difference. And that's why when we gather here to pray, and if the word should come out, and then more and more believers uh, come out, you folks out here that are local, you need to invite people and tell them they really need to come out. Because I'm going to tell you, uh, we need prayer now more than ever. More than ever. In Acts 13, starting with verse 6, we read this. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also was called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos and came to Pergen, Paphos and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Now, here, uh, today, if one of us was to cast out, if one of us was to to say in a precatory prayer today, like they like Paul did. And by the way, we do. You know, we believe the word of God here, and, and we believe in your yea be yea, your nay be nay, and you call you call the devil a devil. But we you would immediately be charged with hate crimes. Immediately be charged with a hate crime by just doing that today. And it's gonna get a lot worse. Uh, we see here now in a number of your universities, they're, they're taking where they've had uh, chapels in these universities. They're, they're pulling out all the pews, they're pulling out the pulpits, they're taking, getting rid of, they're turning into mosques. Uh, in the schools, Obamination has had all of the, the chapels and all of the VA hospitals has had everything, had the crosses taken out. The, the Bibles, everything and anything that represented Jesus Christ has been removed from all the chapels through all the VAs all across the country and ordering crosses to be taken off the chapels on a military basis. So you don't see a cross there now. Okay, And, of course, the mainstream media is not going to report on this because they hate us. They really do. You have to understand. But if they did hate us, we'd be in more trouble. Because Scripture says that uh, if you're a friend of the world, you're an, you're an enemy of God. Okay? James 4.4. 4. So, if we turn over to 1 John chapter 3, in 1 John chapter 3, uh, this is a, a very confusing passage of Scripture to a lot of people, starting with verse 4 through 12. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth unto the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in sin, not whosoever sinneth, hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. 
He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the God, the Son of God, was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For, he, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, but he is born of God. And this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither is he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, who slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Now this is a, a very confusing passage of scripture to a lot of people, because they say, wait a minute, uh, that's uh, contrary to what he said in the, the first chapter, where uh, he said that all people are sinners. If you said that you don't sin, you're a liar, the truth's not in you. But no, what he's talking about here, he's talking about the Romans chapter 7, what the Apostle Paul said about the natures, the older nature and the new nature, the sin nature and the spirit nature that we have. And that's what he's referring to here. So, as the Apostle Paul said, it's not I that sinneth, but the sin that dwelleth in me, the old man, the old nature. And that's what uh, John here is referring to. And so, if you take a look at what we're talking about, this rebellion being the same as witchcraft, if you turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 22, or chapter 15, brother, verse 22, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is iniquity, idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and he hath also rejected thee from being king. Well, those women that we showed you in the picture, they're, they're practicing witchcraft. They, they claim to be reverends. They're not. They're witches. And some of them even have Wicca or Wicca <coughs> bubble stickers on their cars. Okay? But rebellion is the same. No seven. Now, Saul here, he knew he got himself in a whole lot of trouble because he didn't obey God. He was supposed to have a... a killed Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and, uh, you know, if he told him to kill every animal, uh, everything, God said just eliminate them all, and he did, and he wanted to keep the kings to show his mercy, uh, that he was such a great guy, and then Saul thought he could get away with offering up blemished animals as a sacrifice, folks. You don't get over on God. You see, you, God is not mocked. He's not mocked. Nobody's ever gotten gotten over on God. And uh, and so Saul found that out. So now Saul is telling Samuel, look, um, could you go and, and uh, you know, try to, uh, you know, ask God, you know, see if you can intercede for me before God. And you see, that's the difference between the office of a priest and a prophet. Samuel was a prophet. The priest, his job is to go before God to intercede on behalf of the people. And, but a prophet's job is to go before the people. And thus saith the Lord God. So old Saul was asking Samuel to do something he couldn't do. And he wouldn't do anyhow. And then, if we go, and we turn over to Exodus chapter 22. <clears throat> In Exodus chapter 22, uh, here now, today, these same people that we, we just showed, these so-called false teachers, they, uh, they promote sodomy, they embrace sodomy, they say that uh, being a homosexual or lesbian is a loving thing, okay? They've turned God's word uh, inside out, they put good for evil. Uh, they embrace witchcraft. They embrace every one of these United Church for the Antichrist churches. You see, have you'll find that usually they all have daycare centers, and they make children available to. Sign
sodomites. Now, these are ungodly, evil, wicked people. And here, if we read here, verse 16, and if a man entice a maid, now you see, those of us that are <clears throat> born again, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, then we fall under the, the spirit of the law. Someday we will be at a Bema Seat judgment. But those that don't fall under the spirit of the law, they fall under the letter of the law. And people think that, well, and I, and I heard this, the law has been done away with. No, the law has been not been done away with. Christ fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law for those of us that received Christ. But for all of those that have rejected him, they will be judged by the letter of the law. I remember one time I was speaking at a Christian college, and I, uh, a young uh, Young senior, young boys and girls stood up, one boy, one girl, and one of them said, um, there is no more law, the law was done away with, uh, and that was only for the Old Testament. I said, oh, I said, so the believers, I, I said, we're believers are under the spirit of the law, yes. I said, okay, so then uh, how are unbelievers, how are they judged? And they just looked at each other because they didn't know what to say. They were simply parroting what they'd heard other people say, but not, not knowing any answers. And I told them this, and here's what happened at that school. Uh, you know how kids normally, you know, they were slouching down in their seats like they do and, and when I came in there. And you could just see, look on their faces, well, here's another boring preacher with another boring, syrupy message. But I got their attention when I said, you know, the vast majority of people, according to the Lord Jesus, that you know will not go to heaven. The vast majority, Jesus said, many are called, but few will come. Many, few will enter. Many are called, but few are chosen. And the vast majority of people that you know right now are not saved and are not going to heaven. They're going to hell. And boy, I'm going to tell you, those kids set up straight. Then. You ought to see them. It was a big difference. And, uh, you know, and I preached to them. And I said, how many of you in here right now, if you're saved, there's evidence of your salvation. <clears throat> if you're saved, I said, folks, look, you take a bird and you throw that bird up in the air. If that bird's alive, that bird will fly. That's what birds do. They fly. You take a fish, you put it in the water. If it's alive, that fish will swim. That's what fish do. Christians want to serve the Lord. Christians, if you are saved, you have a burning desire in your belly to serve God. And I'm going to tell you something. You see it in the look of fear on these kids' faces. And way in the back of the room, one of their instructors, a lady, burst out crying. She burst out crying. Yeah. And now, I only preached there for about 45 minutes, but I was there for two hours and 45 minutes after they dismissed it. They let the class stay. They just let them out to come and ask me questions. Because, see, they're not used to getting the gospel being preached to them. I mean, Instead of pabulum, they got the truth, they got preached, and they got their attention. And these kids, I'm telling you, they were, they were scared. A righteous fear, the kind of fear that you need to, to literally scare the hell out of them and scare them into heaven, huh? the heaven into them. And afterwards, that teacher, she asked me if she could speak to me before I left, and I talked to her, and she said, uh, she was still crying. She said, you brought me under conviction. She said, I'm afraid I, I didn't have that burning. And she says, a lot of what we do is, is, is just symbolism over substance, isn't it? I said, yeah. And you see, uh, I found out that that very same teacher had been a part of that situation with promoting that uh, uh, Rick Warren's 40 days, the 40 days uh, of the purpose-driven life. That, that tells me right there that she was biblically illiterate to be a part of that and not know the difference. Not to be able to read his purpose-driven life books and not, not recognize that those things were uh, very, very cleverly devised deceptions from cover to cover. And anyhow, so if we go here to Exodus uh, 22, 16. Well, no, we already did that. But he says here, uh, 16 through 19, If a man entice a maid, 
that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. You know, us older guys in here, when I was a young man, my dad called myself and my brothers all together, and he said, look, part of becoming a man is accepting responsibilities for your actions. And you guys want to fool around, I'm going to tell you right now, you get a girl pregnant, you're going to marry her. You get her pregnant, you're going to marry her and give that child a name. And he says, I don't care what she looks like, okay? He said, she could look like seven miles of bad highway, but you're going to be, you're going to uh, keep up to your responsibility. And we knew that, because we knew that if we got a girl pregnant, if her dad didn't shoot us, ours would, okay? So we learned that be part of becoming a man is accepting responsibility. These young boys today got no, no idea about responsibility, none. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. In other words, if the father says, look, I don't want you for a son-in-law. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Thou shalt not suffer. Do you understand? Under the Old Testament, do you realize, see, God is immutable. He doesn't change. So all of these out here today running around, practicing witchcraft, wicked bumper stickers on, uh, I remember one time I led the very first the very first uh, Operation Rescue in Ohio, myself and a couple other uh, men, pastors. And when I was there, it was the abortion mill in Akron was up in an old motel. And on that motel, they were up, um, while we were down below in the police, and we had the place surrounded and closed in, I had a press badge on. So what I did, having the press badge, uh, the police would didn't know who I was. I could stand right there and listen to them as they were talking about, well, we'll give them five more minutes and then let's move in. So then I would go over and say, in two minutes, move out. You see, the police really didn't want to arrest our people. It was too much paperwork. So our guys would move out and go to the next abortion mill. But anyhow, while we were there, up on the balcony on the second floor, you had a group of witches. These were the apostles. These witches were there. And they were offering up. They actually stood there and... Uh, the lady who was there on from Channel 5, uh, the blonde-handed lady, I'm trying to think of her name. Is that Lee Jordan? No, no. Uh, uh, the, the taller lady, she was there for years. Oh, you folks would all know her if I, if I could remember her name. I had one of my senior moments here. But um, anyhow, she was probably out of the whole bunch of them over there, the best of all. But she was down there, and I told her, because she had a cameraman, I says, record what they're saying. Record what they're saying. And they were actually up there, the witches were up there, praying to Sophia, offering up the, their menstrual blood as a, a sacrifice, as a communion. And that's what they were praying. I, says, I said, record that, show them. And offering up these children as a sacrifice to Sophia. The, the, the aborted babies. That's what these witches were doing. Of course, uh, their Channel 5, they would not, would not put that on the, the news, but I did. I took it out and I put it on the radio. Right away, these are wicked people. But you see, God is immutable. He does not change. His standards doesn't drop. He doesn't adhere to political correctness. It, it doesn't matter to him. And so, witchcraft uh, is, when he says here, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And that's what we have out there today, a lot of witches. Uh, Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's coming very quickly, lying with a beast. This is the, the sodomite, that's the next step in degeneration. Is, is They're going to try to, to, to get that legalized, bestiality. And, uh, you know, you'll see that next. They'll be wanting to marry their elephants and stuff. Uh, he that sacrificed to any god, save unto the Lord, shall, he shall utterly be destroyed. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Well, if you turn over to uh, Jude, and in 
Jude. Uh, you know, when we, we said, thou shalt not lie with a beast. But you know, I got to tell you something here. <clears throat> 